Hi, everyone. I'm Mihir Gokhale. I'm a product manager for the ClickHouse Cloud Console, and I've also spent the last three years developing ClickHouse's internal data warehouse, which is the system that we use for all sorts of internal reporting for operational metrics, tracking our infrastructure costs, um, doing product analytics, and much more. So that's what I'd like to talk about today. But before I get into all of that, I just want to say thanks for being here today. It's really amazing to see so many people in this room today, and it's crazy to imagine that just three years ago, this company didn't even have like a product in the market. So I remember three years ago, it was May of 2022, and we were just launching our product for the first time in the market. It was a private preview, and we invited a small group of kind of potential users to try out the product for the first time. Everyone was really excited about this launch that was going to happen. Engineers had been working on the MVP for months. Um, users were excited to see what we'd built. And there was a lot of excitement in the air. It was a big um, milestone for the company. And I remember every week, we would huddle in a Google Meet, and we would all look at this one spreadsheet, which we used to track the, uh, to see how the launch was going. Uh, so this is an actual screenshot of the spreadsheet we used. We've redacted some columns. But um, basically, each row represents one user that was signed up, and each column represented some conversion event that was happening. And I'm not joking when I say like people were obsessed with the spreadsheet. Like This is all people would look at. And the way it worked is, before we met every, every, kind of every week, I would sit down, I would pull reports from five different systems, join them all in this one spreadsheet, and that's what we would look at in this meeting, so everyone would have the most real-time data. It definitely wasn't very pretty, and it definitely wasn't scalable at all. But for all intents and purposes, this spreadsheet was the company's first data warehouse, because it kept everyone on the same page as this, launch, this crazy launch was happening. Most of our engineers were stuck in Grafana or their IDEs. Many of our sellers were in Salesforce or email. So this spreadsheet was really the one thing that was keeping everyone together and that everyone in the company had access to. So it was really valuable. Today, I'd like to talk about how our organization's data warehouse evolved from this spreadsheet to something that's a lot more feature complete, how ClickHouse DB enabled us to do all of that, and where I see the future of data warehousing headed with AI on the horizon. So here's a kind of three years later, here's an architecture diagram of how our data warehouse looks today. Uh, it runs on three ClickHouse Cloud services in AWS US East 2, so we dog food our own product for our data warehouse. Um, and at its core, it really does three things. First, it inserts data. We use Airflow to schedule daily or hourly insert jobs from about 19 data sources. Um, then it models this data. It, that involves joining a lot of these raw data sources together and also just providing access to the raw data as it is. We use dbt to kind of encode some of that logic and show some of the data lineage there. And finally, we provide access to this data in a way that follows our company's security policies. So we use ClickHouse's RBAC features to make sure that the right people are able to see the right amount, the right roles are able to see the right data. As I mentioned, we have about 19 raw data sources configured that are inserted either hourly or daily, and about a billion rows or about a terabyte of uncompressed data is inserted every single day. Um, and once the data is actually in our data warehouse, um, we perform a lot of the joins on it so that we can model it. Um, a big feature of this kind of data modeling aspect is that we use very, these very large, wide, denormalized tables so that users have to perform fewer joins. And that's, that, that was kind of an artifact of when joins weren't as good in ClickHouse. And um, they're much better now, but um, we find that those denormalized tables are still really easy to work with. Finally, we've configured a number of access points for our data warehouse. So users can use the built-in cloud UI, which um, they can use to write SQL queries and create dashboards. Uh, we've also hooked up Superset, which is an open source BI tool. And we also use an A-B testing tool called GrowthBooks, which lets us do kind of basic A-B testing queries to the data warehouse directly. Data Warehouse is a pretty business critical system in our company because of all the different business units in the company that use it to make decisions. So everyone from leadership, product, engineering, support, sales, a lot of people in the company are familiar with the Data Warehouse and they use it every day to kind of gain reports or look at dashboards. And perhaps most importantly, before new ClickHouse releases are released to the cloud, they get rolled out to the Data Warehouse's staging environment first. So we get to see the, first, the newest ClickHouse versions, the good and the bad. <laughs> I think one place where a data warehouse really shines is, and it's how it's able to incorporate real-time data into regular kind of traditional batch reporting that most people expect from data warehouses. Um, in the beginning, our data warehouse was kind of pretty standard. We had like rolled up metrics, like number of signups, number of trials, um, and it worked pretty well. But I think it started to get really interesting when we started importing more like real-time kind of weird, funky data formats into, the, into our storage. 
Um, so ClickHouse was able to handle like all sorts of data that we threw in. It could handle very large volumes of data. It could ha handle different formats of data. Um, so for example, every day we, we insert millions of rows from our observability system, which Vlad talked about the other day. Um, so it's very raw metrics, they're logs. Um, so it's very raw data, and ClickHouse is able to aggregate those on the fly. And we're able to use materialized views to also do those aggregations on the fly as they're inserted. To give another example, we also import events from Google Analytics, which are kind of like nested arrays. Um, so even in their raw format, ClickHouse's functions make it easy to access this data. Finally, from our control plane document DB, we're able to import these kind of JSON-like um, JSON -like rows, which represents organizations or services that have been created in our control plane, which provide a lot of the information that we need. So being able to join all these three da different data sources together in one system is really valuable for us as a company. The feedback we received after starting incorpor to incorporate more of these types of uh, raw data sources was really positive. Our marketing team was able to get a better sense of which, which kind of web pages on our websites were most popular and which pages and docs were being the most visited. Our product team was able to make, uh, to define more custom conversion events and our support team was able to diagnose customer issues better because they were able to click directly into logs that ClickHouse is, that was generating for the customer service. So by storing all of this data in ClickHouse, we exposed both the raw format as well as in a kind of pre-joined aggregated format in these tables. And that was really valuable because anyone with just a basic knowledge of SQL was able to do the data wrangling needed to click into the data, view trends, and be able to build these views very quickly and build dashboards very quickly. So metrics like number of customers with failed queries or number of customers that experienced this specific query were pretty easy to do because we had all this raw data as well as the regular batch reporting all in one place. Looking to the future, though, I think AI has a lot of potential to make the power of data warehouses more accessible, especially to folks who aren't comfortable using SQL. In my three years working on the data warehouse, I noticed that a lot of people were hesitant to use SQL. It seemed, you know, SQL comes pretty naturally to me, but I realize a lot of folks, like including non-technical folks, but also a lot of engineers, SQL doesn't come very naturally. And so I think the power of AI and the ability to use natural language to interact with data warehouses is really powerful because it expands the amount of users that can actually gain power from a data warehouse. This year, we added another tool on the data access layer of our data warehouse, an MCP server that links our data warehouse to an AI model. It's been pretty remarkable to see how much usage it's been getting internally, and I think it has a lot of potential, again, to expand how many people can gain insights and power from data warehouses. Here's a quick video demo. So you log in and you're able to kind of write a prompt in natural language. Um, yeah, you're able to write a kind of prompt in natural language. The, the AI bot is able to query the ClickHouse cloud cluster directly, generate data and get re results from the query and it's able to generate dashboards as well. So we exposed this tool to everyone in the company and everyone in the company was able to just interact with the data warehouse directly like this. So here's a quick kind of architecture diagram of how it works. So we've got our ClickHouse, we have our data warehouse service, which is a ClickHouse cloud service, and we've got an EC2 machine that runs our MCP server as well as LibreChat, which is uh, a chat interface that our users can use to uh, inject prompts. What this means is that, oh, and then this, um, this chat uses the Anthropic, uh, Anthropics model to um, work with the MCP server to uh, query the ClickHouse Cloud service directly. We slowly gave this MCP server access to more and more tables and provided it with more context and saw how people kind of reacted to it. And the, the reaction was overwhelmingly positive. Uh, you know, I personally, before we launched this, I used to get like almost daily pings being like, hey, can you write the SQL query for me? Like, hey, can you create this dashboard for me? And I think after we launched this, like, the, like that never happens anymore. So it's kind of funny how, and it's pretty clear, like the usage data also shows that like a lot of people in the company are using it. So it's pretty cool to see how quickly it's proliferated throughout the company and how many people have been able to gain value from it. I think specific to a data warehousing context though, I think these AI agents must be able to produce results in a consistent manner. 
I think what makes data warehouses so powerful is that no matter who asks a question or no matter who kind of queries a data warehouse, you're gonna get the same results. So I think in order for AIs to really work in the context of a data warehouse, they need to be able to produce a con consistent result no matter who asks the question and what kind of query they generate. So at the end of the day, I believe that data warehouses are special because they actually represent groups of people that are working together um, to find answers and make decisions from data. It's not something an individual uses. It's something groups of people use together to make decisions as an organization. And so whether it's a spreadsheet, whether it's a dashboard, whether it's a chat bot, I think um, you know, no matter what the access layer is, uh, data warehouses are valuable because they keep everyone anchored to the same source of truth. So as our company has grown, our data warehouse has grown with it. And using ClickHouse as the back end has been, has been game changing because we can have everyday kind of reporting, we can also incorporate real time data, and we can also do cool things like um, easily add AI agents on top of it. So thank you. Looking ahead, I'm really excited to see how AI is able to kind of change the game for data warehouses and how it's able to make data warehouses more accessible to more people so more people can really have harness the power of data warehouses. Thank you so much.